Hi everyone and welcome to Home Reno Collectibles where today we're taking a look at the Mattel DC Comics Multiverse Batman vs Superman Wonder Woman and this is part of the uh, Collect and Connect wave that comes with the Grapnel Blaster replica which we'll be taking a look at once we've done every figure in the wave. So if we switch it around to the back there you can see that replica right there. This figure actually comes with the uh, front part of the stand right there and then here we can see Superman and the two other versions of Batman which I have already reviewed so check them out on my channel. But for now, let's go ahead and get this thing open and take a closer look. And here is Wonder Woman out of the packaging, and this figure in general is a pretty decent figure, but honestly there is a couple of things that I would definitely change about this that would make it a load better. But before we get too much into the review, here she is next to Superman, and also next to Batman. You can actually see that she's basically the same size as uh, as Superman right there, a little bit smaller than Batman, just because of the ears really. She's uh, six and three quarter inches tall. And now here she is next to the new 52 version of Wonder Woman from the uh, DC Unlimited line from Mattel. So there is your comparison of another Mattel Wonder Woman figure and I think that that one is absolutely fantastic. And out of the two, if you're just generally looking for a Wonder Woman figure, you can probably find the one on the right there for quite cheap right now. So if you want a Wonder Woman in that scale, I would definitely just go ahead and get that one. So I would definitely just go for that one on the right if you have to get one or the other. But obviously if you're collecting the, uh, you know, the Collecting Connect uh, Grapnel Launcher and whatnot, then this is obviously going to be your choice or if you want it because of the movies. Now, one of the gripes that I have is the shield. Now looking at it, it looks absolutely fantastic detail wise and, you know, it's just really, really nicely done. Paintwork and everything. Come around to this side and this is why I have a gripe with it because it goes onto the arm that way, obviously. If I can just ferret the wrist out of there. It gets kind of tight in there. Um, here you can see that there's the grip, and that would be what the, uh, you know, basically that's the arm brace that you put your arm through. So you'd put your arm through there and you'd hold that grip. That would put the shield this way around. Now the writing is this way up. The eagle is this way up, but she would hold it this way. So I really don't see why they've made it like that because then it would be upside down if she held the shield up. So major, major, major design flaw there. That should definitely be the other way around. I don't care what you say. Um, the sword looks absolutely fantastic. A really, really nice detail, both paint and sculpt. It fits in the hand well, and also it fits in the sheath down here very well as well. So that looks fantastic and works really well. That's something that that other Wonder Woman figure did not have. But one thing I also want to show is look at how small this lasso is. That looks crazy. Like it should have been at least this big. Um, I know that it's just, you know, all wrapped up and what there and holstered, but come on, it should be at least this big on other Wonder Woman statues and whatnot from the uh, Dawn of Justice movie and whatnot. It's much, much bigger than this. So I'm really disappointed in that lasso right down there being so damn small. The paintwork on the figure is awesome. The gold and the silver and the red and everything, it just really, really works. I love the design of the suit. It's just awesome. All the armor pieces and everything, absolutely fantastic. But the head I am massively disappointed in, and this is the other thing that I would definitely change about the figure. Um, not only does it not share a likeness to the actress at all, really, but also the hair is so stiff that moving on to the articulation right now, it practically doesn't have any because you just can't really move it at all. It, it That's the extent of the articulation and that is honestly horrible. That is just, just really, really crazy right there. Uh, the arms are good though. They go all the way around and in and out. We have a rotation at the upper part of the arm, single jointed arm, but we also have a rotation right down here uh, at the forearm. So as you can see that cut right there, you can get it doing whatever you want with the bracelets, but then you can rotate it out so that you can get the arm bending more. But then you also have rotation at the wrist. So really, really nice posability right there. We have just a waist twist right here. The legs come out, but not all that much because of the hindrance of the skirt piece there, but that's fine. They do go forward and back just fine. Rotation just above the knee, single jointed knee, and then the uh, hinge at the feet down there, still no ankle pivot. I definitely, definitely think that it would have been nice to go ahead and put an ab crunch in there, especially as you've got this strap there and stuff, because that would kind of cover a lot of that sculpt uh, of that ab crunch, so I don't think that would have mattered too much. Because this is flexible, uh, it wouldn't have hindered it either. 
But the head is massively disappointing because you can pose her in a really nice position with a shield and a sword and everything, but you can't even turn her head to fight anyone because it's just, you know, this hair is so horribly molded. Like, not only is it really, really hard material, but it's also sculpted so close to her that there's just no way that you would ever be able to move that head, so I really, really don't like that design at all. I think they should have gone with a more windswept sort of look, just like this one with the hair back. I mean, this hair isn't, you know, massively epic for articulation, but it's better than that, at least. So overall, I definitely do recommend the figure if you are going for the Collect and Connect piece like me. If not, then I would definitely go ahead and wait for the DC Films version, which is obviously a little bit bigger. It's in the 7-inch scale, not the 6-inch scale. However, you know, and obviously if you have the money to go ahead and pay for that, it is going to be, uh, you know, probably double the price of this. But it's going to come with better accessories. It essentially looks like a statue that's got articulation, and it's a hell of a lot of articulation too. It would just beat this in every way, and that goes for every single one of the figures in this line. So, you know, definitely if you're going for the Collect and Connect piece, and you already have Universe Classics and Movie Masters and stuff, then yeah, they're going to look great on your shelf with them. If not, I'd just go ahead and wait and see what other great figures come out in the future, from DC Collectibles or from Mattel. But that's it for this review guys, thanks for watching, if you enjoyed the video go ahead and give it a like and if you want to check out more pictures of anything else from my collection check out my Instagram, it's homerino123 and the links are in the description below for that and also my Twitter and my Twitch. And for more DC reviews go ahead and subscribe, so thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.